there we go. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm really excited to see you all here this morning. And today we've got the amazing Lydia Poschema, who's our in-house DIY expert, uh, taking us for a natural bath and beauty workshop. Um, Lydia knows pretty much how to make everything um, from scratch at home. Um, so she'll be taking us through some of her favorite things to make at home. Um, and if you guys have got anything in particular that you're interested in learning how to make, then um, feel free to share that too. Welcome, um, welcome everyone, and it's cool to have you all along here. Sorry, I'm just putting that someone waiting. Um, today we are going to be making bar salts, um, uh, sugar scrub, um, deodorant, and I was thinking we'd put in a lip balm and put you on a lip balm, so let's pop on a lip balm too. Um, so for a little bit of housekeeping, um, the uh, recipes will be emailed to you guys at the end. So everyone who registered for this workshop today will get an email um, afterwards with all the recipes. Um, and also, I sell kits on my website, um, which is foreverybody.co.nz, um, that have all the ingredients and everything like that ready to go, so you can easily make your own um, DIY products at home. Um, now, just as one thing, I was thinking of making a clay mask. Would anyone be interested in learning how to do a clay mask, or are you kind of like, you yeah, know, just a show of hands, or a wave, or a... Put some thumbs up for clay masks. Liz, <laughs> thing, there's still a bit of reverberation. I think you might have to turn off one of your devices because they're sort of interacting with each other. Okay, but when I do it on my laptop, then that's all you can see. You can't see, like, much. I can turn off my phone, though. Maybe just one of them. The, there, there, um, there's a bit of feedback. Okay, I'll do that then. Yeah, that's much nicer. Um, okay, is this better? No, that's, there's a bit of feedback still. Sorry, I'm going to turn off the phone here. Okay, is that better? Yes. Yes. Can everyone hear me? Okay, sweet. Let's just do that. You can kind of see my face, but not heaps. So um, we will get started anyway. Um, a little bit about, about myself and what I do. So I run a business called For Everybody, um, and I use this to raise money and awareness for pregnancy crisis centres around New Zealand. Um, so these centres provide support to women who might find themselves in an unexpected pregnancy and don't know what to do. Um, so it provides them financial support, but also like physical support, counselling, a place to stay if need be, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so... Um, I provide support to a whole bunch of different pregnancy crisis centres around New Zealand and just really want to raise awareness for them and the support that they can offer to women who find themselves in that um, unexpected situation. Um, so I will get started with the balm, no not with the balm, with the, um, with the Deodorant, sorry, mixing up my words. So um, with the deodorant, I like to have like a bit of a kind of balm type of deodorant as opposed to like a spray on one or whatever like that. So um, this is it here and it's quite, it's relatively soft, but it's also um, dry enough that it's not like super oily. So in it, it's got like a balm base, which has got shea butter, um, beeswax, and coconut oil. So the mixture of those gives a nice soft kind of balm, but it also gives you something that soaks in nicely, but also creates a bit of a barrier, which is what you're really wanting to create with a, a, a deodorant. So um, first of all, we've got in here, um, so if you're gonna be getting a kit, um, it'll, all the wet ingredients, all the oils and stuff will come in a tin like this. Um, so just tuck, chuck that into a pot, and Francis is gonna go mount that for me. Um, while we wait. So you can either mount that in a pot over a stove or else um, in the microwave, whatever's easiest. I'm currently in our showroom at work, so all I've got is um, the microwave down in the kitchen downstairs. Um, so um, mount that up, and then we'll be adding um, tapioca flour and um, baking 
soda. So the mixture of these um, is kind of gentle on your skin. Um, like if you use only baking soda, then you can find it quite harsh and kind of dries out your skin and causes a reaction. Um, we use like a mixture of both tapioca as well, because that wicks away some of the moisture, but also um, is just a bit gentler on your skin. Um, baking soda is really good for in your deodorant though, for providing a bit of like anti-smell, anti-bacterial kind of um, properties in that. So that's why we still do use some. Um, so once that's melted, then we'll be adding in a bunch of essential oils. Now, the essential oils you use in this um, deodorant really depends, um, it's up to you on what you want to use. Um, I always like putting in a little bit of tea tree, maybe like one drop. You want like that total about 14, 10 to 14 drops. Um, but I often use like about a drop or two of tea tree because this just gives you a bit of like anti bacterial, antifungal um, kind of properties as well, which is good obviously for um, getting rid of smell. Um, but with any kind of blend, whenever you're blending essential oils, you want to have some top notes, middle notes and base notes, because that gives a nice well-rounded well kind of um, smell. So um, I also like to have something kind of grounding. So that would be like your base notes, like the trees, like frankincense or copaiba, um, cedarwood. Is cedarwood a base note, Buffy? I don't know. Okay, yeah, it is. Um, all those kind of ones anyway. Um, I also like to add something citrusy sometimes um, or add something florally. So um, think like lavender or patchouli, geranium, um, or else like wild orange or a bit of lime. Lime is really fresh in a deodorant, um, so that's quite nice as well. So it really just depends on what kind of um, smell you're going with. I made one the other day. Now what did I put on up? This one here. Um, I'm always I'm always making more deodorants and, and testing different recipes and stuff. And in this one, I put um, frankincense, wild orange, and oh lemon eucalyptus. And it's like a really fresh smell. So lemon eucalyptus is a slightly different smell than um, plain eucalyptus. It's slightly more fruity, slightly kind of fresher. Um, but you could use normal eucalyptus as well. But it's just like a really kind of fresh. Um, yeah, it's semi, like a tiny bit sweet because it's got the orange in it. Um, so I really like it anyway. You can smell it all day. Um, so once that stuff's melted, we'll add in our oils. Um, and on the recipe that I'll be sending out, there's a bunch of different suggestions for what oils you might like to use in it as well. So, um, yeah, you, you're not going to just be like, ah, what do I do here? Okay. So Liz, what's in, what's in your base again? Um, shea butter, beeswax, and coconut oil. Shea butter, beeswax, and coconut oil. And, and then just your essential oils on top of that? Yeah, so now we're going to add the essential oils, and then we'll mix in the baking soda and tapioca flour. Mm -hmm. um, so today, I might actually just try something a bit different. Who's, who's got the citrus bloom um, essential oil? It's like a limited edition Mother's Day one, and I really love it. It's just quite a... I don't know. The first now. So we're just going to put in, so I've got all my um, oils melted. And then I'd put in about 10 drops of that. And then I might just put in like one drop of tea tree too. Um, just because it's always good to add that. And let's see how that smells. It's nice. So now I'm just going to add the powders. So this is tapioca and baking powder. And then give it a good mix. Now, once this is all melted, you're wanting to mix all this stuff in quite quickly because otherwise it solidifies super quick once you've added your powders and um, you'll struggle to mix it nicely. So we'll just give that a really good mix, get rid of any lumps. And then we'll pour it into the tin. Now, I um, like to kind of reduce waste and packaging. So if you're buying a kit, um, sometimes some of the ingredients will come in the container for the finished product. Um, so like with the balm, your um, waxes and stuff will come in the tin that you're going to put your finished balm in. You'll also notice in these tins, they come with this little like polystyrene kind of plastic bit on the top. I always take that out because I just, I don't know, I don't like it in the finished thing. So pull that out. And then you can pop it in your balm and then you've just got your balm. I can't tip it over yet because it's super runny still. Um, but that's all done. So as you can see, it takes like, what, 
a couple of minutes to make your own barm at home. Super easy. Um, and you can make it whatever flavors you want. So you can have, you know, different ones for different days of the week, if you so wish. Um, did anyone have any questions about that before we move on? Liz, I do. So, you know, your base, so you've got the shea butter, coconut oil, and what was the third one? Beeswax. Yes. So is there a particular reason that you have all three? Is that just to make it hard? Like, could you get away with using just one or the other? Um, you could. I just find that that gives it a nice texture and consistency. If you use only um, beeswax and coconut oil, I found it made it slightly harder. Um, yes. And if you leave the beeswax out altogether, um, it's just not as solid. But you could, like, play around with it. Um, I just found... Mm. From all the recipes. beeswax is beeswax sets very very hard. Shea yeah. butter would be in the middle, and then co coconut oil would be quite at, at, the, at the other end. Yeah, but coconut oil that? is almost like harder. It's it's got a lower melting point, but it's naturally like a harder oil um, than shea butter. Uh, okay. Shea butter kind of gives it a bit of still softness, even though it's got a it's it's like a barrier as opposed to like a um, coconut oil. Also, is like a one that melts into your skin yes. and doesn't really leave. Um, any oil on top of your skin whereas yeah. um like once once it's actually you know absorbed whereas shea butter provides more of a barrier and it kind of stays there and doesn't go away so quick what so, about um cacao butter could you use that instead of the beeswax or not not really because um, yeah, well. yeah but beeswax also because it's um like a natural product like it is it naturally provides um kind of anti-fungal yes. kind of properties as well but that's just what I personally use and find works. Um, but there's a lot of products that I find I've tried and I'm like, oh, that's not really a deodorant. So that's why I personally use that blend. But of all, by all means, you can muck around and play around. No, with that, that sounds really good. That's just good understanding kind of what, you know, the rationales to each of the things. And then why do you put in, so the, can you just explain to people the baking soda and the tapioca, why those go in there? Yeah, so that's just so that it's not like an oily balm and it just gives it a bit more of like a um, bit more of a structure. Yeah. Um, so the ba um, uh, baking soda kind of provides a bit of like an anti-bacterial um, properties as well um, and cleansing properties. And then um, the tapioca just helps kind of balance it out a bit because if you use just plain baking soda, it can be quite kind of rough on your skin. Um, yes or like dry it out or cause reactions and stuff. So just by using the two of them, it just um, helps. You can also use corn flour if you prefer, um, but yeah, one or the other. Just something that is nice and fine flour um, that kind of helps just to give it a bit more structure. And um, Judy's just got a question here, a really good question actually. Can the deodorant mix be poured into a wind up container? Because I know lots of us have probably got those particularly if you've used the doTERRA um, yes. deodorant yeah. before, which I have uh, used uh, many bottles of, and I've been saving them as empties, wondering whether you can reuse them and pour this mix in. Yeah, totally. Um, I would, yeah, you could totally do that. It's like, it's got enough structure, like, that you can, it's like soft, but it's not like super, like, it's not like a paste, right? Well, no, I don't know. <laughs> hard to describe it's got enough structure that you would be able to put it in a wind up one if you wanted um yes. i just don't have any and don't really need the extra plastic but if you've got them you know from old deodorants and stuff by all means you could totally use them so yes yeah totally and i guess if you wanted a slightly harder structure so that that texture there is a lovely paste that you can sort of go you know paste on but if you wanted a slightly harder structure you could just increase the beeswax content slightly and reduce the coconut oil and shea butter content slightly, couldn't you? Yeah, or else just add a tiny bit more um, flour and like um, tapioca flour, um, so that'd be fine. Um, and then it makes it slightly thicker straight away. Um, cool as. Does that answer everyone's questions? Hey, I have an idea for, for, for you guys, if you'd like to use my idea. So I make the, I usually make the base pretty subtle and every morning I use a different oil on top of that. So I would take a little bit of uh, deodorant and add like geranium or, or frankincense or, or, or any oils that I like for my hormones. Sometimes I use this clary sage and I just use, it's like a personalized deodorant. <laughs> One for each, for any day then, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I like it. 
Okay, cool. Well, maybe we'll move on to the next product then anyway. Um, so we don't keep you talking all day. Um, let's make a face scrub. So I like using raw sugar or else pink salt. Either of those have enough like kind of um, structure in them. Like if you use just normal table sugar or table salt, they're quite fine and they end up kind of just creating like a bit of a slush, um, which is fine. But I prefer something that's just a bit bigger grain. So pink salt or raw sugar work really well. So um, just two tips. Um, so with this, we'll just get a jar. And I like to just fill up the jar as my measuring cup um, because then at least you know it's going to fit into the finished um, final product. So you can use, you can also use like coffee granules if you want. It does make it look quite dark and it makes it a bit more mess if you're going to be using it in the shower. Um, but it is quite nice and it does smell quite nice too. Um, or else you could use a mixture of salt and sugar. Um, in terms of like the difference in, in what they provide for your skin and stuff, it's very similar. Like pretty much we're using this as like an exfoliant, um, not particularly to provide much, um, I don't know, benefit to your skin, right? Um, so the bit that we're going to be using to kind of moisturize and all that kind of stuff is going to be a bit of coconut oil <clears throat> and a bit, and then whichever essential oils we like. Now, my favorite way to make a face mask is, so I have um, this one here. Now, I use about four tablespoons um, of coconut oil, but I do like my face mask quite um, kind of slushy, if that's the right term for it, moist, or I don't know, whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> random words that you can choose. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> I usually use... Um, four tablespoons. Some people prefer it with like maybe two tablespoons. So anyway, first of all, pour your oil into a jug um, and then add your essential oils. Now you're wanting to use probably about five to ten drops of essential oils total. My favorite um, scrub is about equal parts of um, frankincense and um, grapefruit and ginger it's kind of like marmalade it's just really yum and kind of like happy because it's got the spices which are kind of like uplifting right and then it's also got the citrus ones which are also really uplifting and kind of happy happy oils um that's what i personally use but you could go for anything um you could use um like florals you could use um so like you know lavender or um what are other flower oils? Patchouli, geranium, those are all really nice kind of oils. Um, but it's just totally up to you. Now, one thing I do recommend is if you are in our team, um, then you'll have the, the Dropley app. And that'll also give you a lot of um, information about different oils. So if you've got like really oily skin, then you might want to use specific oils over, say, if you've got like a really dry skin as well, because obviously the essential oil is going to give you different kind of properties. So this one here today, I'm going to use ginger. Um, and grapefruit. We'll just use like four drops of each. And then a um, couple of drops of frankincense. And that'll be about 10 drops total. Now, if it's a couple over or a couple under, it, um, it's not going to matter too much. That's just kind of like the ballpark. Give them a quick stir. And then you can add your sugar. Now, this is also the part where if you're wanting, you can add like dried flowers as well. Um, if you're making this as a gift, um, or if you're making this just because you want something a bit more pretty, um, adding some, can we do this without tapping it everywhere? Um, adding some like rose petals or some lavender um, or something like that is a really pretty way to have a bit of um, something different in there. So I'm just gonna add some rose petals. You can either add these in now or else you could also layer it between, like in layers in your jar once everything's mixed up. Whatever you prefer. Okay. So now I've got this here. As you can see, it's got some like petals through it. 
Sorry, the lighting's kind of funny. Um, it's got some petals and stuff through it, and it's just got a bit of, I don't know, a nice happy smell, but also like a, a um, kind of a bit of like something fancy and fun to have fun with in the evening um, or in the morning. Um, just with a scrub, you're not wanting to use it too often, maybe like once, next, twice per week, because otherwise you can kind of um, cause skin irritations if you um, exfoliate too much. So then you can pop that in your jar and then you're ready to move on. Does anyone have any questions about that? As you can see, it's super easy. It literally takes a couple of minutes max to make. Really good for like gifts um, or also, um, you know, if you like need to make a birthday gift for someone or something and you've, you haven't got much time, great option there. So next one we'll do is a bath salt. So bath salts are very similar to making your um, uh, face scrubs. We, I like, you can choose to just put the oils straight into the Epsom salts, or else you can choose to um, put in some coconut oil as well. I'm using a bit of coconut oil because that kind of helps dilute the oils. And then when you're filling up your bath, um, or a foot bath if you don't have a normal bath, then you don't need to worry about all the oils just flashing off in the heat and evaporating. Um, I'm just, not sure, sorry, I'm just moving this camera because I keep on kind of bending over too much. Um, so again, I like to just use. Sorry, my jar is like this. It's got a really small top, and it's getting empty. So <laughs> just trying to get all the um, get some salts out. So. Um, some salts here. I just like to use this as a measuring cup so that we know that it's going to fit. Now it's going to get a jug and we will put in some um, coconut oil of choice or any other oil of choice um, and then mix in our essential oils like we did with the other one. Now essential oils for this one you kind of want to be careful because you want them to not burn your stuff in the bath. So if you use like a lot of citrus oils or some other really kind of hot like um, oregano or ice blue and stuff like that. You're just going to be careful that they're going to be diluted enough that they're not going to go and cause um, you to get a rash. Um, also, this is really important about the purity of the oils here. Um, I know someone who had some frankincense and she, uh, that she had and she thought, oh yeah, no, it says it's pure. So she used it, but then she ended up getting like this massive burn ring around her neck. She must have had a very full bath. But anyway, a massive burn ring around her neck um, because of some of the toxins and stuff that were actually in the, um, in the frankincense. Um, so just um, be really careful and make sure you've got really good quality oils, which is why I do use doTERRA because they, they, they've been tested to be pure. Um, so in this, there's like so many different options of what you can use. I personally love lavender piece. It's kind of like a lavendery smell, but it's also got a bit of vanilla um, and a bit of uh, cedarwood and vetiver, nice and relaxing. Um, so it gives a nice option as well. So I'm gonna use, again, about 10 drops total. And then we're gonna add our fractionated coconut oil. Um, I use a little bit less coconut oil in this as opposed to in the um, uh, scrub, just because I find you don't want it too oily when you're putting it in. Um, so you're probably going to want to use about a quarter of a cup of this in a bath. Now, um, bath salts also have a lot of therapeutic benefits, just in the Epsom salts themselves. Um, they can, they're very, really relaxing because they're full of magnesium, and they are also, they help draw the toxins out of your body. Um, so we're just going to add in our salts and then give it a good mix and then again you can mix in your flowers and stuff so these flowers that I'm using um, I've also got chamomile and lavender um, these are kind of like just teas um, so you can buy them um, in a lot of places like in, in from the supermarket really, um, and all those kind of ones. So when it's finished, it's kind of just like, it kind of holds it together slightly, but it's not like super runny. Um, 
and then we can mix in any oils, any flowers that we want, or else you could layer it to make it look really pretty. Um, I might add in here some lavender because we're making this quite lavendery, and a bit of chamomile because we want to kind of pull out those notes. So then you kind of get this one that looks like fat. That's not quite yet mixed, so it's got quite a few flowers on the top still. Um, and then once that's finished, you can just put it into your cup, uh, your, your um, jar, and you're good to go. So about a quarter of a cup, little sprinkle in the bath, um, and that provides you with lots of benefits. Does anyone have any questions about that? Feel free to unmute yourself. How much coconut oil did you add? I think I missed that. Um, we used about maybe two tablespoons. Do not hate. Um, cool as. Is it just the um, Epsom salts and coconut oil mix, basically? Yeah, and then your essential oils. Um, yeah, nice and easy. Cool. Now, one thing I really do love making is clay masks. Now, clay masks are pretty easy to make, but I find that they often go off really quickly um, because if you're going to be adding like a liquid that's not an oil-based one, but say rose water or just normal water um, to a clay, then it'll end up going mouldy quite quickly unless you like store it in the fridge or something like that. So often what I recommend with a clay mask is that you actually just pretty much make it on the go. So for me, when I'm going to use a clay mask, I, um, where is my clay actually? I personally use betonite clay most of the time for my skin type. It's good for acne prone and oily skin, which is definitely what I've got. Um, so I have a big jar of it, but pretty much what I do is, where's my rose water? Is, um, I have a, a jar of it and then some rose water and then I like you can just mix all this together in a jar and then store it um, but what I find lasts longer is if you just got like a rollable with whichever oils you're wanting to put on your skin um, and which might be suitable for this so I personally use like frankincense um, or else HD clear is also a really good one um, or um, which other ones most of the time it ends up being HD clear because I've just got it. So just roll this over your skin, wherever you're wanting to. And then that provides kind of like your essential oil component of the mask. So how much you want to put on, doesn't need to be heaps. And then you can just get like a small jug or a, or a bowl or whatever you're wanting to use. And take literally like a tablespoon of the clay and then pour in um, some rose water until you've got like the consistency that you're wanting. So it can be nice and kind of soft. Um, now, the amount of liquid that you're gonna use really depends on the, um, on the clay that you're using. So I also use sometimes like um, Moroccan red clay or else like French green clay. They all have different absorption rates and that's kind of also what gives them the different benefits for the skin. So, um, betonite clay really draws a lot of stuff out. It's super absorbent. So it absorbs pretty much like twice its weight in water. Whereas like pink clay probably absorbs like even, you'd probably use less than like, maybe like three quarters the amount of water to the amount of clay that you're using. Um, so it's very hard to kind of give an indication of how much liquid to use. Um, but then here you've got it. I like to have them kind of relatively runny, but it's thick enough that it stays on your skin. Um, and then you can just use that on your face and then clean it off. Now, I'll just quickly grab some other clays um, and tell you a quick story. So, it's like red clay, which is, it goes really, really dark, and also this green clay, which looks quite light, 
but when you use it, um, it makes quite a dark green kind of one. So one day I made my cousin a, a mask and I was like, just watch it, Juliet, because she's not on here. Don't know her. Um, <laughs> Annika, you do. Anyway, I was like, just watch it, Juliet. Don't use it in the shower because it will go everywhere and it makes a mess. Anyway, like a few days later, I get this call from her and she's like, Lydia, I look like I murdered someone in the shower. And I was like, what did you use in the shower? Anyway, so she'd used her clay mask in the shower and had literally gone everywhere. So if you're using a coloured clay, <laughs> just don't use it in the shower. Just use it at the sink, wash it all off, keep it nice and tidy, and you'll be honky-dory. Um, top tip from me. Um, so anyway, that's how I like to do my clay masks, because it's just super simple, and it doesn't go off then. Um, now, Pip, you were wanting, did anyone have any questions about the clay masks? Pop them in the comments or demute yourself if you're wanting to. Um, Pitt was also wanting to make a lip balm. So lip balms, um, or any balms for that matter. Um, I usually just use a mixture of beeswax and coconut oil. I find that absorbs into your skin really nicely um, and gives a lot of moisturising. Oh, sorry Nancy, where do you source your clay? Um, I get them from all sorts of different places. They will be on my website as well. I just haven't had a chance to put them on yet. Um, I can't even remember. I got massive amounts a long time ago. So I need to look it up, sorry. Uh, no, but um, that's, Lydia's gonna have little kits available so that you can just, you know, you don't have to worry too much. You can just buy the kit and it will have a few different types of clay in it and then you can make them, and that will, you know, give you ample to make a handful of yeah. different products. Yeah, which clays you want. Um, I just, I started putting them on the other day and then, Ran out of time. Um, with that also, it'll be, I'll put them on the website, but it'll be like just different clays so you can select whichever clay you want. It looks to have an explanation for what your skin, like what will be best for your skin type. So you'll better choose what you might like. Um, and Jude, yes, you can use apple cider vinegar. Um, apple cider vinegar though can really draw things out in your skin. So um, you're probably not wanting to use completely apple cider vinegar. Once I used that, and my face was like bright red afterwards. So, yeah. Um, probably like, I would use maybe quarter or half apple cider vinegar and then water. Um, I use rose water often, or else just plain water, either one of them. Because um, I find that they, um, it kind of moisturizes and it doesn't dry stuff out too much, but it still gives you the benefits of the clay and all that kind of stuff. Also, in terms of the oils that you're using, like the essential oils that you're using, um, don't use too much essential oil because when you use the clay, the clays kind of have this um, habit of like drawing into your skin and pulling the toxins out, right? So then they end up pushing the essential oils quite deep into your skin. So if you use a lot, then you can kind of end up with um, just like, not, not like raw skin, but just it makes you a little bit red for a little bit. Just want to moisturize. It can just dry it out a bit more, is what I'm meaning to say. Um, so yeah, not too much essential oils in them. Like if I was making it in, say like a jar like this size, which I used to do all the time, and then it would go moldy, I would probably only use like two or three drops in that of essential oil all up. Cool as. So for our um, lip balm, I actually just keep a jar of like, ready-made balm without any scent, without any colouring in it, um, just to make it easier to make balm. But um, you're wanting to use like one part beeswax to two parts coconut oil. They're on the side of a little bit more coconut oil than a little bit less, um, just because this makes it nicer and soft um, and also absorbs into your skin nicely. So you can use um, shea butter and coconut butter, uh, no, cocoa butter, sorry, and all those kind of other butters. But I just find that they um, end up leaving quite a big barrier on your skin. And I like to be able to put, say, if I'm putting like a balm on my skin, on my hands, for example, I like to be able to continue working and not feel like I've got this like oily stuff all over me, you know what I mean? Um, so if you use like shea butter and stuff like that, then it can often kind of leave a bit more of a barrier on your skin, which makes it feel more oily. Um, so that's why I personally just use... Um, coconut oil and beeswax. So I'm just gonna 
Francis, can you find that list for me? My handy little sister is going to go and mount that for me. And then we'll talk about oils. So um, when you're going to be putting essential oils in this, especially in like in a lip balm, it's really nice to add citrus oils. Um, but because they smell really nice and they're kind of fruity, right? But you're just going to be really careful with that because you can end up with um, burning a lot more easily because they um, kind of react with the sun in a different way. Um, so with balms um, or anything kind of that you're putting on your skin, um, if you're putting essential oils in it, you want to just do a very, very minimal amounts of um, citrus, especially if you're going to be going outside. Um, in saying that, a lot of people would say, don't use citrus oils um, in, a, in a lip balm at all. I kind of just say, use them, but use maybe like one or two drops and then use some others, maybe like some frankincense and other stuff, if that's what you're wanting to use. But just keep it as minimal as possible. And if you're planning to go out, you know, to the beach for the day, then probably just don't use that lip balm that day. Um, but yeah, so just err on the side of caution always. Now in this, you can also use like peppermint. It's really nice and like kind of fresh um, on your lips. Uh, or spearmint is also nice. Um, or else also sometimes like using basil and some other kind of like herby ones is quite nice as well. So um, you can have a play around with like different scents of what you like might like to use. Um, but I'm just having a look at my oils now. Geranium is also nice. Um, or like ylang ylang is also quite nice and fruity, like kind of a sweeter smell. All that mounted very quick. Okie dokie. So we've got this stuff mounted now. And I'm just going to grab my... Lydia, with citrus oil, um, just use green mandarin if you, if you wanted to use citrus oils in your balm so you don't get sunburn on your lip. Yes, that's a good point too. Um, green mandarin, you don't end up with burning as well. Thanks for that, Pat. Sorry, I'm just looking. Sorry, I'm at um I'm at the factory and the guys are locking up. <laughs> like, don't set the alarm. Um, where is my green mandarin? I can't even find it. Here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna use like two drops of citrus bloom. And then in terms of, this is just for a little lip balm. I use um, little tins like this. It's nice and cute, but you can also use like tubes, which have got mica all over them, so they're a bit pink. Um, whichever ones you prefer. I will have both of them on my website. Um, now in terms of the mica, um, if you're wanting to make like a tinted balm, then you're wanting to add some mica to it. So mica is like a natural, um, like mineral-based colorant. Um, now it's a super fine powder. So as soon as you touch it, you get it all over your skin and it kind of goes everywhere. Um, you don't want to breathe it in because it is not super good for you. Now in a lip balm, you're probably wanting to use about like a good quarter of a teaspoon kind of thing. Um, half teaspoon, then you just give it a good mix. Make sure there's no lumps. And again, it's still going to be super runny. It's really hard to show you, but it looks really nice and metallic -y online uh, on top of it. Um, so it depends on if you're wanting to make this into like a um, like a really soft kind of like lip balm or else more of like a lip tint depends on how much you're wanting to use i'll have all the instructions in the um in the recipes that i send out anyway so once all that's mixed in then we just pour it into our tin and then you're done so for that i'll just use um two parts um two parts coconut oil one part beeswax and then some mica and whichever oils you want. Um, so that would be very similar for if you wanted to make like a body balm. 
um, then you would just use like a, a larger quantity, obviously. Um, I've got like 50 mil tins um, that I normally use for those. Um, and then you might use different oils as well for that. So for me, when I use, um, I make like a face one that has like yarrow pom, um, which is like a really moisturizing kind of um, serum -y type of oil. Um, it's like super dark. I don't know who's seen yarrow pom. It's like, takes so long for any to even come to the top. Um, but it's really, really lovely for your skin. So you can use that. You could also use frankincense. You could use um, Kapaya, but again, you probably want to use like a whole mixture of different oils in like a in like a skin balm, and um, the Dropley app and those kind of apps are really handy for kind of helping you figure out which oils you might like. For example, for me, I've got one that I use for my eczema and for like sunburn, anything kind of itchy, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then I've also got another one that I use for my face, um, and then I've got another one that I use for my lips. So you know, you can have you can have any number of different kind of um, blends or whatever and you can make it specific to what you're wanting as well so yeah Wait. cool does anyone have any questions about that do you use the same base for insect repellent olivia yeah that's a good point yes yeah you can also make insect repellent balms um and again it would be the same base it more it, it, it soaks into your skin nice enough that it doesn't leave like a huge oily layer, which is especially what you're wanting if you're going to the beach and you don't want to have like sand sticking to you like crazy. Um, but it also um, provides a lot of moisturization. So with that then, um, if you're wanting to make like an uh, uh, insect repellent, there's this blend called Terra Armor, which is a really good one for insect repellent. But you can also use like um, eucalyptus, peppermint, um, tea tree, there's a whole bunch of different oils that you can use for like an insect repellent. All as any other questions? Otherwise, I think that's pretty much us done. Sorry, honey, what's in your eczema balm? What's in my eczema one? Um, I put in there myrrh, uh, Roman chamomile, lavender, and juniper berry. That's the um, the balm that's actually also on my website. I make that one as like a as a complete balm and sell that one too because I just find it really versatile. And a lot of people have been like, "Oh, I really want one for this," and I'm like, "Try this." So, yeah, I've made a lot of them. Yeah, that's a that's a really lovely combination. The only and the only other ones. Do, does it does that have lavender in there as well? Lavender tea tree. Don't use tea tree. Um, one of my brothers kind of reacts sometimes to tea tree too um, because he used to use. Um, a specific oil for woodworking a lot it kind of gave him a reaction to it um, only because he used it in such huge quantities without using any protection on his hands um, so anyway if I'm using if I'm making stuff that he might be using then I typically just leave the tea tree out mm -hmm. but otherwise sort of lavender frankincense myrrh um, roman caramel juniper berry and helichrys is the other one that I found helpful for those sort of skin conditions but that's such yeah. a combo that um, I've used Liz, the one that Liz has made. Yeah.